In the liturgical calendar of the Western Christian churches, ember days are four separate sets of three days within the same week specifically, the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday roughly equidistant in the circuit of the year that are set aside for fasting and prayer. These days set apart for special prayer and fasting were considered especially suitable for the ordination of clergy. The ember days are known in Latin as the quatuor anni tempora, the four seasons of the year, or formerly as the jejunia quatuor temporum, fasts of the four seasons. The four quarterly periods during which the ember days fall are called the ember tides. Topic <inaudible> etymology. <inaudible> Topic. Ember days have their origin in the Latin quatuor tempora four times, there are various views as to etymology. According to J. M. Neal in Essays of Liturgiology 1863, Chapter 10, "...the Latin name has remained in modern languages, though the contrary is sometimes affirmed, quatuor tempora, the four times." In French and Italian the term is the same, in Spanish and Portuguese they are simply temporas. The German converts them into quatember, and thence, by the easy corruption of dropping the first syllable, a corruption which also takes place in some other words, we get the English ember. Thus, there is no occasion to seek after an etymology in embers, or with Nelson, to extravagate still further to the noun imbrin, a recurrence, as if all holy seasons did not equally recur. Ember week in Wales is Welsh. Wythnos y Sigorian, meaning, the week of the processions. In medieval Germany they were called Weifassen, Wiegfasten, Wiegfassen, or the like, on the general principle of their sanctity. We meet with the term Fronfassen, Fron being the then word for travail. Why they were named Fulfassen it is less easy to say. Neil and Willoughby in the Tutorial Prayer Book 1913 prefer the view that it derives from the Anglo-Saxon imbrin, a circuit or revolution from YMB, around, and Rhine, a course, running, clearly relating to the annual cycle of the year. The word occurs in such Anglo-Saxon compounds as imbrin tid, ember tide, imbrin wukan, ember weeks, imbrin fistan, ember fasts, imbrin dagas, ember days. The word imbrin even makes it into the acts of the Council of Enum, 1009, Jejunia Quatuor Tempora Quae Imbrin Vocant, the fasts of the four seasons which are called Imbrin. Single quote quote dot. It corresponds also with Pope Leo the Great's definition, Jejunia Ecclesiastica per totius anni circulum distributa, fasts of the Church distributed through the whole circuit of the year. Folk etymology even cites the phrase. May ye remember the inevitability of death as the source. Topic Origins. Topic The term Ember Days refers to three days set apart for fasting, abstinence, and prayer during each of the four seasons of the year. The purpose of their introduction was to thank God for the gifts of nature, to teach men to make use of them in moderation, and to assist the needy, possibly occasioned by the agricultural feasts of ancient Rome, they came to be observed by Christians for the sanctification of the different seasons of the year. James G. Sabak argues that the Embertide vigils were not based on imitating agrarian models of pre-Christian Roman practices, but rather on an eschatological rendering of the year punctuated by the solstices and equinoxes, and thus underscores the eschatological significance of all liturgical vigils in the city of Rome." At first, the Church in Rome had fasts in June, September, and December. The Liber Pontificalis ascribes to Pope Calixtus I a law regulating the fast, although Leo the Great considers it an apostolic institution. When the fourth season was added cannot be ascertained, but Pope Gelasius I speaks of all four. The earliest mention of four seasonal fasts is known from the writings of Philostrius, Bishop of Brescia, died ca. 387, de Hares. 119. He also connects them with the great Christian festivals. As the ember days came to be associated with great feast days, they later lost their connection to agriculture and came to be regarded solely as days of penitence and prayer. 
It is only the Michaelmas embertide, which falls around the autumn harvest, that retains any connection to the original purpose. The Christian observance of the seasonal ember days had its origin as an ecclesiastical ordinance in Rome and spread from there to the rest of the Western Church. They were known as the Jejunium Vernum, Estivum, Autumnal and Hemale, so that to quote Pope Leo, S words AD 440 to 461 the law of abstinence might apply to every season of the year in leo s time wednesday friday and saturday were already days of special observance in order to tie them to the fasts preparatory to the three great festivals of christmas easter and pentecost a fourth needed to be added for the sake of symmetry as the encyclopedia britannica 1911 has it from Rome the Ember Days gradually spread unevenly through the whole of Western Christendom. In Gaul they do not seem to have been generally recognized much before the 8th century. Their observance in Britain, however, was embraced earlier than in Gaul or Spain, and Christian sources connect the Ember Days observance with Augustine of Canterbury, A.D. 597, said to be acting under the direct authority of Pope Gregory the Great. The precise dates appears to have varied considerably however, and in some cases, quite significantly, the Ember Weeks lost their connection with the Christian festivals altogether. Spain adopted them with the Roman Rite in the 11th century. Charles Borromeo introduced them into Milan in the 16th century. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, Ember Days have never been observed. Yet in Western Rite Orthodoxy, which is in full communion with the Eastern Orthodox, the Ember Days are observed. Topic. Ember Weeks Topic. The Ember Weeks, the weeks in which the Ember Days occur, are these weeks Between the third and fourth Sundays of Advent although the Common Worship Lectionary of the Church of England places them in the week following the second Sunday in Advent Between the first and second Sundays of Lent Between Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, and The liturgical third week of September According to an old way of counting, the first Sunday of a month a datum important to determine the appropriate matins readings was considered the Sunday proximate to, not on or after, the first of the month, so this yielded as Ember Week precisely the week containing the Wednesday after Holy Cross Day September 14, and as Ember Days said Wednesday and the following Friday and Saturday. It has been preserved in that order by Western Rite Orthodoxy and Anglicans. Yet for Roman Catholics, a 20th-century reform of the breviary shifted the first Sunday in September to what the name literally implies, and by implication, Ember Week to the week beginning with the Sunday after Holy Cross Day. Therefore, in a year that September 14 falls on a Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, the Ember Days for Western Rite Orthodox and Anglicans are a week sooner than for those of modern-day Catholics. Topic. Timing. Topic. The Ordo Romanus fixed the spring fast in the first week of March then the first month, thus loosely associated with the first Sunday in Lent, the summer fast in the second week of June, after Whit Sunday, the autumnal fast in the third week of September following the exaltation of the cross, September 14, and the winter fast in the complete week next before Christmas Eve, following St. Lucis Day December 13. Other regulations prevailed in different countries, until the inconveniences arising from the want of uniformity led to the rule now observed being laid down under Pope Urban II as the law of the Church, at the Council of Piacenza and the Council of Clermont, 1095. These dates are given in the following mnemonic San Crux, Lucia, Sinners, Charismata Dia Ut sit in Angaria Quarta Sequence Feriaeor in an Old English Rhyme Fasting Days and Emberings be Lent, Whitson, Holyrood, and Lucy, the Ember Days began on the Wednesday immediately following those days. This meant, for instance, that if September 14 were a Tuesday, the Ember Days would occur on September 15, 17, and 18. As a result, the Ember Days in September could fall after either the second or third Sunday in September. This, however, was always the liturgical third week of September, since the first Sunday of September was the Sunday closest to September 1, August 29 to September 4. As a simplification of the liturgical calendar, Pope John XXIII modified this so that the third Sunday was the third Sunday actually within the calendar month. 
Thus if September 14th were a Sunday September 24th 26 and 27 would be Ember Days, the latest dates possible, with September 14th as a Saturday, however, the Ember Days would occur on September 18th 20 and 21 the earliest possible dates. Prior to the reforms instituted after the Second Vatican Council, the Roman Catholic Church mandated fasting only one full meal per day plus two partial, meatless meals on all Ember Days which meant both fasting and abstinence from meat on Ember Fridays, and the faithful were encouraged though not required to receive the sacrament of penance whenever possible. On February 17, 1966, Pope Paul VI's decree Pinitemini excluded the Ember Days as days of fast and abstinence for Roman Catholics. The revision of the liturgical calendar in 1969 laid down the following rules for Ember Days and Regation Days. In order that the Regation Days and Ember Days may be adapted to the different regions and different needs of the faithful, the conferences of bishops should arrange the time and manner in which they are held. Consequently, concerning their duration, whether they are to last one or more days, or be repeated in the course of the year, norms are to be established by the competent authority, taking into consideration local needs. The Mass for each day of these celebrations should be chosen from among the Masses for various needs, and should be one which is more particularly appropriate to the purpose of the supplications. They may appear in some calendars as days of prayer for peace. They were made optional by churches of the Anglican Communion in 1976. In the Episcopal Church, the September Ember Days are still optionally observed on the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after Holy Cross Day, so that if September 14 is a Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, the Ember Days fall on the following Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday in the second week of September whereas they fall a week later in the third week of September for the Roman Catholic Church. Some Lutheran Church calendars continue the observation of Ember and Regation Days, though the practice has diminished over the past century. <inaudible> Ordination of clergy the rule that ordination of clergy should take place in the Ember Weeks was set in documents traditionally associated with Pope Gelasius I (492–496), the pontificate of Archbishop Eckbert of York, A.D. 732–766, and referred to as a canonical rule in a capitulary of Charlemagne. It was finally established as a law of the Church in the pontificate of Pope Gregory VII, C.A. 1085. However, why Ember Saturdays are traditionally associated with ordinations other than episcopal ones, by the time of at the latest 1917, major orders could also be conferred on the Saturday preceding Passion Sunday, and on the Easter Vigil, for grave reasons, on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, and, for minor orders, even without grave reason, on all Sundays and double feasts which included most saints' feasts and thus the great majority of the calendar. Present canon law prefers them to be conferred on Sundays and holy days of obligation, but allows them for pastoral reason on any day. In practice the use of Saturdays, though not necessarily Ember Saturdays, still prevails. Subsequently, Pentecost Vigil and the Feast of Sts. Peter and Paul and Saturdays around it have come much in use as ordination days. See also Topic. Regation Days Perchta Quitemberka, Kvaternika, Lady of the Ember Days Quarter Days Cross Quarter Day Topic. Notes Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Ember Days Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. External links Readings and litanies for the Ember Days Medieval Sourcebook, The Golden Legend, Ember Days William Smith, DCL, LL, D, A Dictionary of Greek and Roman Antiquities, John Murray, London, 1875. Contains a description of Roman Furiae. Ember Days. The Old Farmer's Almanac.